better say, shout the matter, don't just take what they tell you. It's not so much a mystery, let us search out your history. See, can you shall find? Knock on the door, be open. Come on, open your mind because you're chosen. Greetings, one and all. Welcome back to your YouTube channel, Searching Out the Matter. And the matter that we'll be searching out in this video is biblical marriage versus traditional marriage. The word of the Most High says, A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Genesis 2 4. While the government and your pastors say you need certificate, rings, dresses, tuxedos to be joined as one since the 1600, I ask this question Who will you believe? I say this, let Elohim be true and every man a liar, Romans 3, 4. I just wanted you to know that if you lay with a harlot, you shall become a harlot. Or you did not read 1 Corinthians 6, 16. It reads, what? You know not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body. For two said he shall be one flesh. On what authority do I speak? Judge my fate by my works. And I'm just going to read an article for you to show you proof of all that we're saying. All right. Let's read. A short history of the marriage license and common law marriages. Okay. The concept of marriage has been around for, a long, as, for as long as humans have gathered together for support and love, which is to say, a really long time. Hmm. In the beginning, all marriages were essentially common law marriages. Hmm. Couples were simply declared to be married by their families or themselves and become and began to live together, forming alliances, joining resources, tending to their, to their home, and raising children. Most of these first unions were agreement between two families rather than two individuals. As centuries passed and societies grew, meaningful rituals like hand fasting blossomed around the celebration of marriage. Early marriage rites were closely linked to the turning of the season, yearly harvest, fertility celebration, and offerings to Elohim and spirits. Marriage rituals became progressively more complicated in modern eras. With the increased recognition of women rights, the need to protect and provide for children, concern over inheritance, estate and property division, and new oversight by churches and local government. Well, the involvement of governing institution in marriage expanded, such as the practice of calling bans of marriage by the Anglican and Catholic churches. Calling bans was a public announcement of an incoming marriage usually made for three consecutive weeks by a priest at the couple's church. Sometimes these bans or proclamations were put in writing and published. Ooh. By the end of the Middle Ages, written marriage contracts had become a regular part of the marriage process. Ooh. All right, let's continue. Still, common law marriages remain the standard practice for most families who didn't have great wealth or property to think about. These informal marriages would continue to be legal, legally binded and widely accepted for several more centuries, even as the popularity of written contracts increased. One of the first marriage licenses recorded in the United States was in the 17th century, around 1639, in colonial Massachusetts. Marriage license was adopted by various local governments over the following years with each state passing their own laws to determine who could apply and how. By the 1900, marriage licenses were a common part of the marriage process in every US state. They, they were embraced as an easy way to maintain census data, set a dispute, and in some states to, in to enforce anti-methogenation laws and ban against interracial marriages. Hmm, hope you're listening. These days, only a few states still recognize common law marriages and meeting the criteria for common law marriage can be difficult. All states have provisions in place for the application, issuance, completion, and return of marriage license, but these vary from state to state. 
All right, so we're just going to end here. So now you, you got a brief history of how marriage license came in place and what was marriage before marriage license came in place. Now, the, I'm going to show you a video that that I did and my brother in the faith did about from 2018. Uh, we did it on biblical marriage versus traditional marriage. And just to tell you that, let me, let me get this up and running. Just to show you my growth, where I'm coming from. So I don't want person to think that I just gained this knowledge overnight. No, I had from 2016, 2015, I started reading my Bible and then I started doing a lot of research researches from then. Yes, a lot of researches from then. And then my knowledge grew from there and I started to expand off in a lot of things because all truth matters and not just what you read in the Bible. Because if you have the spirit of truth, it will compel you to search all truth. So we're just going to listen to this um, video that we did back in 20. 18. I hope I'm making sense. I know I talk fast at times. All right, let's get into the video. All right, let's go. Followers of Jesus Christ, and we are here to talk about marriage. And for starters, we know without a doubt. All right, so hear me saying Jesus Christ back then, because that's where I were. I was in my growth. I didn't know his real name. I didn't know that he had a Hebrew name. I didn't even know that the Bible was written in Hebrew at that time. So. This is when I was a baby in the faith. I've known, I've grown to know that the Bible was written in Hebrew and they hollered Hebrew name. And I found his name, Yahusha, the Messiah. And of course, Yahuwah or Elohim. Let's continue. God ordained marriages. So, but to search out the matter at hand, are we going to ask Google? Are we going to find it in the world? Are we going to ask our pastors? Are we going to read it in inspirational books? No, but straight from the word of God. Right, where the truth is found from the foundation of the world. For 2 Timothy 3, 16, it says, All scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. In righteousness. Now, in searching out the word of God, we have to read and believe. For the scripture says in Romans 15, verse 4, For whatever things were written before, were written for our learning. So let's learn. Genesis 2, 24 tells us, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And Jesus, who is the word of God, says again in Matthew 19 and verse 5, A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now we see from the word of God that marriage is the joining of two flesh to make one by the word of God. But from the world's point of view, marriage includes a pastor, a certificate, rings, white dresses, tuxedo, marriage license, and a ceremony. Without these from the world's point of view, you are not married. But let's see now, from the foundation of the world, if it was so. Example number one. Isaac and Rebecca in Genesis 24 and 67. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and he took Rebecca and she became his wife. Example number two, angel took wife in Genesis 6 and verse 2. That the son of God saw the daughters of men and they were beautiful and they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. Example number three, Deuteronomy 21, 10 to 13. God instructed Israel as a nation. Verse 10. When you go out to war against your enemies, and the Lord your God deliver them into your hand, and you take them captive, 11, and you see among the captives a beautiful woman, and desire her, and will take her for your wife, 12, then you shall bring her home to your house, and she shall shave her head and trim her nails, 13. She shall put off her clothes of captivity, remain in your house, and mourn her father and her mother a full month after that you may go into her and be her husband and she shall be your wife and as you can see you can see there no ring needed no certificate needed no ceremony needed right she does have to mourn her mother and her father then go through the cleansing process then the man could lay with that woman and that woman could be his wife we move and she shall be your wife. Now, do we see in any of the examples, any pastors, certificate, rings, white dresses, tuxedo, marriage license, or ceremony mentioned? No, certainly not. But the word of God being manifested, as he said in Genesis 2, 24, and Matthew 19, verse 5. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 
1 Corinthians 2, verse 14, it says, But the natural man does not receive the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Spiritually discerned? Now let us test your spiritual understanding. In John 4, verse 18, Jesus said to the Samaritan woman that she had been with five different husbands, and the one that she has now is not her own. Now is Jesus saying that the Samaritan woman has had five different pastors? Yes. Is, it, is Jesus saying that, um, did young, is Young just saying to the woman that she had five different pastors or ceremony or a ring? You know what? Let's continue. Certificate, rings, white dresses, or ceremony? Certainly not. But that she had laid with five different men, and the one that she is now laying with is not her own. From both old and new, we clearly see that the word of God was in and still in effect. For he says that his truth shall endure through all generations. Psalms 100 and verse 5. Isaiah 4 verse 6. He says that his people perish because of lack of knowledge. Daniel 12 verse 4. It says knowledge shall increase. Now, let's see knowledge. We're reading from an article called Everyday Life, the History of Marriage License. Marriage licenses were unheard of prior to the Middle Ages. In England, marriage license is one form or another are more than 400 years old with the practice brought to America in colonial times. Today, applying for a marriage license has become an accepted practice and is often perceived as necessary for legalizing a marriage. However, in the United States, the state issues marriage license is a subject of intense controversy for some individuals. Now continuing, this part says early marriage contracts. For centuries, marriage were private contracts between two families that may or may not had the bridegroom or bride consent. Marriage was not only for procreation, but also for building financial, social, and in some cases, political alliances. When the state-run Church of England decided it wanted to have a say in approving marriage partnership, law regarding marriage license were established to ensure a level of control and a source for revenue. Continuing with knowledge, this one is called License Rebellion. During the 1960s, couple rebelled against government authority by rejecting the marriage license and choosing cohabitation because they believed a piece of paper could not define their relationship. Today, you hear that just now? They rebel against the marriage license because they are saying that a piece of paper, a certificate, could not define their relationship. A piece of paper could not define their relationship. Let's move. Some fundamentalist Christian chose to marry without a state-issued marriage license. What did we get from that article? One, that marriage license was instituted about 400 years ago. Two, that the Church of England decided that they want to have a say in approving marriage partnership. Three, during the 1960s, when it was implemented, people rebelled saying a piece of paper could not define their relationship. And four, marriage license is is for building financial, social, political alliances, and for control. Now back to scriptures. 1 Peter 2, 13 to 14, and Romans 13, verse 1. It says we ought to subject ourselves to our authorities. For those who use this to say we must obey the law of the land, so we must go and get a marriage license, we say this. The law of the land has legalized the same-sex marriage. Will you do it? No. Simple, because it does not apply to you. But where it applies to you is that if you and your partner is trying to do a business transaction together, or you or she is writing a will for your partner, then you'd have to follow the law of the land. For the law of the land would not consider he or she your husband or wife unless you have a marriage license. So if you want to do business with the law of the land, you have to follow the law of the land, but not when you're going to God. If you're going to God, you follow the word of God. You're joined together by the word of God. But doing business... So in simpler terms is this. If you want to do anything legally, you can't go to the, the place or the organization and point to your wife and say, this is my wife because the word of the most side says she's my wife. No, because you're trying to, to probably... Um, perform a legal document, right? Get a legal document. Therefore, you have to go through the law of the land to use their services. Thus, you have to have a marriage certificate to prove that she is your, your wife according to the law of the land. So when the law of the land applies to you, then you, you need to get a, a marriage certificate. Because 
my wife and I have a marriage certificate because we need to do, um, we need to have legal documents with both our names on it, right? But in the eyes of the Mosai, we are not married because we have a marriage certificate, right? We are married because we are joined together through the joining of the flesh. All right, so we're not going to go any further with that video. Thanks for watching. Um, let me just remind you of one thing before I go. Just a quick reminder. Just a quick reminder. Remember that we're doing a 30 day challenge on YouTube. We make one video every day for 30 days, and I know I can do it. And this, I think, this should be day four, if my memory serves me correct. So leave a like on the video. I ask, please subscribe if you are, if you are not already. Subscribe to your channel if you are not already. We're putting in the work and, and we're not just making videos. We're making videos so to edify you, to make you more edified. So you can know to navigate through life. Remember, fight the good fight for your children and let us search out the matter. Don't just take what they tell you. It's not so much a mystery because everything other history. Seek and you shall find, knock on the door shall be open. Open your mind, brethren, because you are chosen. Till next time, brethren.